Along with the few features brought by the just-released MiG-29 9.12A, there is a series of improvements to the R-27 family. This video is the first look at the new missile capabilities. The last time I mentioned the R-27ER, I showed how this missile could be manually lofted whilst inverted and pulling positive Gs. It was capable of reaching speeds in excess of Mach 6 and, kinematics-wise, be a potential threat even beyond 100 nautical miles. The only reason why these properties could not be exploited was the relatively short battery life. This peculiarity prompted me to raise several questions. For instance, why such a marvellous hypersonic missile has such a limited battery, de facto handicapping itself? Fast forward a few weeks, the answer came in directly in a whole new missile introduced in patch 2.9.5.0.15010. The change log describes how every aspect of the R-27 missile has been reviewed, updated and overhauled if necessary. The changes to this missile are fantastic, so let's see how the R-27R and R-27ER fare against their previous incarnations. The most common variant used in DCS is definitely the R-27ER. This is an oddity. Note that I'm still searching for reliable sources, but the ER was introduced at the very end of the Cold War and it was neither popular nor exported at any level comparable to what we see in the game. In fact, the export of such variants started only at a later time, from the mid-1990s and several nations never ordered them. The first set of parameters are impact speed versus range. This methodology is less applicable to a sortie, given the number of parameters that can affect the outcome. The launching platform released at Mach 1 at altitudes of 5,000, 15,000, 25,000 and 35,000 feet. Note that I have slightly changed the data collection process to increase the precision of the saved values. I used to round to the closest mile, now the results are saved in steps of half a mile. Starting with the R27ER and comparing the missile to the 2023 dataset, it seems that the R27ER is fundamentally unchanged, with a slight gain at lower altitudes. For this reason, I will not go too much into the details as I covered them in the past already. However, to quickly recap, the closest Western alternatives used in the early 1990s, ergo the AIM-7 alphabet and later the P, are all outclassed by the powerful rocket motor of the R27ER. The AIM-120B is not a threat either, but the AIM-120C-5 is slightly closer as far as kinematics are concerned. The AIM-54 is a whole different missile system, and it is not worth comparing it now. As a side consideration, November marks five years since the announcement of the new missile API, necessary to finally better represent the peculiar characteristics of the Phoenix. As mentioned earlier, I always wondered why a missile kinematically capable of reaching targets 200 kilometers away was limited by its battery life. This patch answered the question, annulling any effect of manually lofting the R-27. Whenever the pilot tries to release the new R-27 whilst pitching up, the missile soon corrects its trajectory. As this example shows, having a positive attitude, besides helping to deal with the stress of the modern life, still provides a marginal bonus. However, it can be argued that the effect derives more from the additional altitude the aircraft reaches at launch, rather than manual loft per se. The most important aspect of pitching up even slightly is that the nose is not pitching down. You don't say, you might be thinking, but the truth is that for the longest time negative pitch greatly affected the performance of missiles in DCS. Despite the prompt trajectory correction, negative pitch still has a minor effect on the new ER-27 family. So, although a marked pitch-up attitude at launch is unnecessary, maintaining even just a few degree up is always useful if coherent with the scenario. Since manual loft as we knew it is gone, the R-27 cannot be pushed behind the LAR anymore. This was previously possible as the missile tended to cruise at a higher altitude following an arcuate trajectory before diving onto the target. The Su-27's avionics were not programmed to account for that, leading to players gaining a slightly longer maximum range. A few tests with the new R-27 revealed how the indication is now more accurate, since the missile cannot reach higher altitude anymore. 
The developers and engineers at Eagle Dynamics put significant effort into creating a whole new missile seeker technology for the R-27. Ergo, the minimum I could do is putting together some tests to discover some new features. Since I do not have a tool set dedicated to this purpose, I had to make up something, and I'm sure I'm missing many facets of the new missile. The first test places the R-27ER into a challenging situation, a wall of closely flying targets. As the changelog described, the new seeker may struggle in such a scenario. Missiles are definitely not my realm of expertise, so I can only imagine that the reason might be related to the inability of the seekers to define a single target, overwhelmed by the returns from the pack. If this is not the case, please let me know in the comments. Back to the test. As the R-27s approach the wall, they start behaving erratically, losing all their energy and never connecting. The second test proposes a target that, as the missiles are being launched, pulls a tight turn whilst chaffing. The target bleeds off most of its energy in the manoeuvre and eventually resumes the original path. Six R-27ER are launched by a Su-27, some before the turn, others after. The last missile went crazy. I have no idea why, since the launching platform never lost lock. The first missile tracked, but then got spooked by chaff, probably intimidated by the posture of the F-14 Tomcat. The second never tracked, it flew straight, minding its business. The third one was so close. Then it remembered he had an appointment and left. The fourth one passed right in front of the Tomcat as to salute the crew before turning hard towards the ground. It reminded me of the Costa Concordia. The 5th R-27ER followed a clean intercept, then, when it mattered the most, it blew it. Fun fact, we can see some missiles flying backwards towards the target after completing a full 180 degree turn. I wonder how wide the Seeker's field of view is. To better understand these results, I tested the same scenario with the AIM 120C 5. From my understanding, the UMRAM should be fairly advanced in terms of modelling. I applied the same modus operandi. I launched a salvo of 9120, and for a second, I felt like a proper blue for player in a casual server. These missiles went again all over the place, all besides two, which connected and hit the target. I also tried a salvo of 4 AIM 54C Mark 47 and all connected, probably because they all arrived when the target completed the turn and was hot again. See? This demonstrates that the Adagio slowly but surely it goes well and goes far is correct. After I thought I was done with this scenario, I decided to test the good old Sparrow in his latest incarnation. The AIM 7P, the Tomcat never lost track of the target but the missiles. Oh my. They all got defeated by the manoeuvring target and never recovered. This flat behaviour is pretty much what we are used to, so the improvements to drunkard erratic level of the R-27 are possibly a positive step, since they are caused by missiles continuously chasing the radar returns. Jokes aside, I don't know what I just watched. Perhaps the maneuver plus chaff and other missiles around created a situation similar to the one discussed in the previous example. Or perhaps the chaff now persists longer, thus creating a broad cloud due to the Tomcat's maneuver. If you have good answers, please let me know. Speaking with real crews, a point often raised against missile simulation in DCS is how semi-active radar homing missiles are easily notched. On the contrary, 
these missiles should be extremely hard to notch. To verify whether the new R-27 improved the status quo, I created a mission and added an Ace AI as a target. As we know, if the standard DCS AI cheats, the Ace AI is at divine omniscience levels of situational awareness. To conduct this test, I downgraded DCS to the previous patch and checked the R-27. All missiles are launched from a distance of circa 12 nautical miles. The first pair of old R-27s were easily defeated by the target as it dived, chaffed and notched. Neither R-27 even attempted to reacquire the defending target. Nothing different from the usual. I then re-updated DCS and followed up with a pair of AIM-7M Sparrows. I forgot to save the previous mission, and I did not realise that I used a different target, but little changed as guidance is what we wanted to see. Again, the two missiles chased a chaff-shaped squirrel and were defeated. Finally, I tested the new R-27. As you can see by the path they traced, the missiles appeared more dynamic in a sense and recaptured the returns from the Su-27, illuminating the target multiple times. Although this behaviour may vary, I've repeated the scenario three times and in no cases the missile just went dumb. More or less, they appeared to have a better resilience. It does not mean that they cannot be defeated, of course, but they showed a greater tendency to reacquire the target. I am happy about seeing this new behaviour, albeit as mentioned, the results must be taken with a grain of salt as a handful of tests is nowhere near enough to show a pattern. I'm eagerly waiting to see other missiles updated in the future. Eventually, the dream is to see the stealth missile launch factor so preponderant in DCS gone for good, via a combination of less all-seeing radars, realistic radar warning receivers, missiles, and useful ground and airborne intercept controllers. For example, and as I mentioned in other discussions, I inquired about the usage of single-target track and track while scan along the AM120 with former crews. Long story short, they confirmed that TWIZ is often a poor mode in such a scenario, although high data rate TWS appeared more effective. The radar mode commonly used until recently was STT to give the missile the best chances to hit. They assumed the target was aware of their presence, so there was little point in hindering the odds of success of their attack. Many players are starting to experience all this only now, thanks to the excellent SP-015. The new radar warning receiver tech is finally making people realise how difficult building situational awareness is, and why aircraft rarely operate as independent singletons as they so frequently do in DCS. The next piece of the mosaic is the missile simulation, and this new R-27 appears to be a very promising first step. Thanks for watching, and take care.